Hello, welcome to another episode of New Gameplay Today. I'm your host, Jeff Gore, joined today by Matt Burtz. Holy Hello. Cow. Leo Vader. Hi. Hi. What are we looking at here, Matt? We're looking at Ghost Recon Breakpoint, the, the latest and greatest oh. entry in the Ghost Recon franchise. All right. There's a lot of quick cuts here, I'm noticing. Believe it or not, this isn't your gameplay, Burtz, but you did play it. Yes, I did play it. What are your thoughts on it? You know, I, I like some of the gameplay changes that are coming into this game. You can tell they listen to the fan feedback, which, you know, has kind of been a Ubisoft stable recently. Mm -hmm. We've seen them, you know, take feedback to heart, whether it be Assassin's Creed, Ghost Recon Wildlands, Division, and they're definitely going that direction here. You see him kind of limping along, having a tough time after getting shot. This is one of the new features in the game that adds a little more realism to the combat. Persistent injuries. Yeah. So it's p permanent debuffs until you camp. Yeah, exactly. So depending on where you get shot, if you get shot in the knee, it'll affect your mobility. If you get shot in the arm, your accuracy will be affected. And you are basically in this state until you can get to uh, Bivouac, which is mm. the new uh, camp system in the game. All right. We're on a new island, too, right? We're not in yes. Bolivia anymore. No, this is a new island that's Ouch. fake. It's the first fictitious setting in the Ghost Recon universe. Um, the, the team really wanted to kind of not be restricted by geographical concerns uh -huh. and maybe political concerns. You know, they got a lot of guff for the Bolivian setting, right. yeah. you know, essentially turning it into a narco state uh -huh. for the game. Uh, so this is the fictitious New Zealand-esque island of Aurora, or oh, Aura. Aura, interesting. Yes. Okay, I'm, he really took quite a tumble there, and it looks like he's not, not feeling great. So he has to go to a bivouac. Yeah, I think that. this is just this is just a temporary fix right here. This isn't the the actual system. Uh -huh. The bivouac is like anytime you see a smoldering fire pit uh -huh. anywhere in the open world, that's a place where you can set up camp. And there's a bunch of stuff you can do there. You can heal up persistent injuries. You can, uh, you know, uh, switch out your classes. They have like kind of a persistent class system mm. where each has its own progression path, sort of like the specializations in Division 2. Okay. Uh, you can uh, eat and rehydrate for buffs. Mm -hmm. You can uh, tweak your weapons for a little bit of an accuracy buff. Yeah. So there's all sorts of stuff you can do, and there's also crafting in the game this time. Oh, oh nice. Huh. So since you're kind of cut off from uh, any sort of government support here, you're not going to get supply drops or anything like that. You kind of have to like make do with what's out there. So mm -hmm. by grabbing stuff in the wilderness, you can craft syringes and bandages and whatnot. Okay. So overall, they're going for more of a realistic survival type. Approach. Yeah. And, and you'll notice right here, um, he's Nomad's just rolling solo. Mm -hmm. This is the first time, uh, I, I think, that... You, well, no, you had you had uh, robots at your help, but you have no uh, system support here from any other AI characters. Mm. Baby makes one. Yeah, baby makes one. <laughs> so you... The idea here is they wanted to really drive home that survival element, and they thought it would be a little bit more effective if they just set you out in the wild out by yourself. So there's no AI teammates mm -hmm. cracking bad jokes. Um, that also means they're not going to be there to revive you or shoot back mm -hmm. when it gets hairy. But there is a, you still have sync shot via okay. the drone system. Which is critically important. That's like... Yeah, it's the, the best, best thing of the game, yeah. basically. So right. they are preserving that. Um, yeah. And you can still play four-player cooperatively which is by far the best way to play. Uh -huh. This is a feature I really like, the prone camo system here. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of be like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Predator and just decide, I'm going to get in the muck, I'm going to cover myself up, so yeah. it's really hard to locate. And they can actually just walk right past you without yeah. seeing you. Do you know if you can do this anywhere or only you can, in specific patches? I don't know. Uh, I think it's anywhere you can go prone, but I'm not sure like what the effect would be if you're in grass mm -hmm. yeah. or you're on a rocky terrain. Uh, we, we didn't get to experiment with it too much, so I'm curious to find out how that works. That. I think in retrospect, that red t-shirt was a bad call. Yeah. <laughs> and there's one of the new close quarter takedowns. There are a bunch of those in this game. Did he shoot a, like a bee's nest? Is that what that was? or just a That was a guy hiding behind a oh, Okay, that was someone's tree. head. Never mind. <laughs> yes. What? So these are your... Uh, this isn't a single player playthrough. These are other characters that are going to be acting like actors. So. Okay. You know, classic Ubisoft way to approach a game demo. Oh, these are like tough guys in the microphone. Yeah. Okay, never mind. T Tango's down and stuff. Yeah. That's cool. On my six. Now, so, noticing in the gunplay, is this the only game to come out in the last five years that doesn't have hit or kill indicators when you shoot? Or were those in there when you played? They're in there. Okay. You know when a guy goes down. Okay, good. I like those indicators. 
So they're playing uh, third person perspective. I always lock it on the first person. It's just, you know, going from third to first, you have a little more accuracy. Feels a little more realistic. Mm -hmm. So you have a nice lengthy preview on the site right now, GameInformer.com, people it, to go read. Yeah, it's huge. It's basically any any sort of water I could squeeze from the rock. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So when you, you went, like the specializations, did you get to mess around with those at all? Not really. Okay. Uh, I, I kind of have an idea of some of the things that you're going to be able to do with them, though. Um, the Panther class is sort of their stealth class. Mm -hmm. So if you're playing with that class, you might have access to like smoke bombs that'll give you a little bit of cover okay. when you're moving through wide terrains or just to, uh, you know, muddy up the uh, the field if you're just trying to get out of there quickly. This is a feature oh I'm super stoked that's in the game. This is the best. The torch. The torch yeah. is here. We no longer have to walk all the way around yeah. the perimeter of a base to find a way in. <laughs> there we go. That's beautiful. Great. That's fantastic. Uh, one of the other classes, Sharpshooter, um, you get to hold your breath a little bit longer when you're lining up uh, precision shots. And you also get three, uh, one of the things is you could get three bullets that do more damage for your sniper rifle. Mm. And here's our old good friend, the drone. The best. Our old friend. They got numbers. So I did what you're not probably supposed to do, is I played Wildlands exclusively solo. So... Uh, it's difficult to have friends is all I'm trying to say here. But, <laughs> but so you played like multiplayer, obviously. Would you yeah, we just played a, a brief 15 minute segment. It's basically this mission. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, the, the game is just so much better cooperatively. There's no doubt about yeah, it. You yeah. know, you can you can split up and do, you know, like two guys providing overwatch while two people infiltrate. Mm -hmm. You can create diversions to draw people one direction while somebody else goes in, gets a hostage. There's just so many more tactical opportunities, mm -hmm. which is why I'm kind of bummed they're taking them out. I wanted them to make the AI better yeah. so you could do some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be annoying. You know, they, they've, they're they adding all these vehicles that have more armor and uh, more uh, weaponry to them in mm -hmm. this game and it's going to be kind of lonesome when yeah. you're out there by yourself with yeah. no one on a turret. But no airdrops. So you, you have to find those weapons, or uh, vehicles rather, in the wild, right? You yep. can't just drop them down. Well, the, the so, you know, the rebel system that they kind of had built up where you help that faction. Yeah. There's still going to be something similar in this game. I'm not sure exactly how it works out, but they said, like, there are going to be multiple factions. Mm -hmm. There's going to be, like, a resistance group that's going up against these uh, these baddies who, by mm -hmm. the way, they're trained ghosts. Uh, Basically, a bunch of ghosts went rogue. Uh, so they have similar abilities, sort of like the, the Bodarks did in Ghost Recon Future Soldier, mm -hmm. if you played that game. And they have a ton of drones and, like... AI machines that you'll see here. I love that takedown. This is a good animation. I hope no one ever neutralizes me in my sleep. That'd be a <laughs> bummer. But you'll see, you know, we see like guys with giant machine turrets. Mm -hmm. we, we see the drones moving around. There's going to be a lot more variety to the enemy encounters you're going to experience yeah. here than you did in Wildlands. Do you think they should connect the Tom Clancy games? Like, should these be Black Tusk? I don't know. I'm up to uh, uh, Tom Clancy at this point just is a, a term they use to this game as a shooter. Mm -hmm. You know, like they're, they're, yeah. the stories are all over the place. They've kind of lost any sort of attachment they had to any of his novels yeah. at this point. So, yeah. I still can't get over the fact that we say the phrase Rainbow Six without like thinking about it or flinching. Now we're just so accustomed to it. Because it's a weird term? It's very strange. It's, I think I would argue it's worse than Resident Evil. Wow. Yeah. Hot take. That's a PR success story that we don't think about. <laughs> it. So how different did this mission go when you played it, Birds? Uh, it was a little, it, it was similar in the way that we went stealth until we blew it, mm -hmm. and then we just opened up guns blazing, but I, we didn't uh, take our time. We just marched right in, yeah. got to the objective, and got the hell out of there. Sure. So I don't, like Wildlands, the AI is very simple compared to something like The Division. Does this... Did it feel significantly different, or where would you say it falls on that spectrum if you... I think it, it does have a little more division to it, just mm -hmm. with those different character classes, like seeing heavies in the world. Mm -hmm. you, you're going to see, like, uh, armored drones that are harder to take down. You're going to have to think a little bit more tactically in the combat encounter instead yeah. of everybody being class cannons. Mm -hmm. But thankfully, like, your weapon is still deadly. They want to preserve that realism, so when you're fighting against guys who aren't armored, they're going to go down real fast. Mm -hmm. And did you get a sense of how you're going to be getting skill points? I'm assuming that 
you'll still have different trees, even though you got four different specialization types. We didn't get to dive deep in that. They want to kind of save that for another story beat. This game's coming out in October, so uh -huh. like this is a very short press cycle. Yeah, yeah. So they have to save some stuff, but I, I'm curious about that as well. Yeah. One thing we do know is that the progression tracks both across PvP and your campaign. Oh, cool. So if you find a gun or get a skill while you're mm -hmm. playing in the campaign, you're going to have that in the PvP. Yeah. I think I really like that loop of, instead of like the division where you're kind of like, there are like weapon pools from different areas and everything. Like this was a different, like, it's kind of like Just Cause where like, hey, there's a weapon case over here that has this gun. So you could kind of yeah. look and kind of figure out from the community, like, hey, if you really like rocket launchers, you're going to want to make a beeline for over here. Yeah. That and, kind of thing. and there were so many guns in Ghost Recon Wildlands. So many guns and I, so many gun mods. Yes. I loved it. I yeah. love that kind of stuff. So I, I'm expecting them to do that. And they, they said there's going to be a pretty aggressive post-launch campaign in this. They're going to have new story content. Mm -hmm. They're going to even have raids. Speaking of Division, huh. they're going to yeah, have four-player cooperative raids. Strange to imagine. And they said that the terrain, uh, because they've built this fictitious place, mm -hmm. they're able to like add stuff to the terrain. It's going to be a, like a living world that maybe they add an underground facility you didn't mm -hmm. know about. Maybe there's an oil rig off the coast you didn't know about. Yeah. I even saw like a base, a uh, research base like tucked in by a volcano hmm. that looked pretty badass. Mm -hmm. So here like another teammate can kind of you know, pick you up and yes. take you out of harm's way and they can do like a temporary fix to revive you, but like, you'll still have a persistent injury. Exactly. Okay. And you can also grab the bodies of the enemies. So if you're playing super stealth, if you want to be more Sam Fisher, mm -hmm. you're able to do that, which I really appreciate as a person who usually tries to do stealth. Yeah, which is too. kind of the whole point of this ghost thing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And picking up a downed friend and bring them somewhere safe to revive them. I feel like that's something I've wanted in a co-op shooter my entire life. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a very cool feature. So you can see all these crazy gadgets that they have here. So mm -hmm. the, the story about this island is uh, it's kind of like there's a Silicon Valley guy who built all this machine learning technology and AI and drones mm -hmm. with the goal of like making the world a better place. But of course, all it takes is like a bunch of wayward people to take control of that stuff and it gets ugly. Mm -hmm. So the idea is these ghosts, we don't know why, uh, but they're here. They took over all this stuff and they're militarizing all mm -hmm. of that technology. And one of the and they look badass. Yeah, and like the big bad is played by John Bernthal, and yes. you can get a taste of that in Wildlands. They just released an update that has a couple of story missions featuring that character. So there you go. Which is a cool idea. Yeah, I like how they're how closely they're timing together, and this is being de developed by the same team as Wildlands too, mm -hmm. which is kind of a Ubisoft rarity. You know, usually. Uh, franchises bounce between multiple studios. Yeah, this is the same team that took all the fan feedback from the fr from Wildlands and you know improved that game over the course of a couple years. So, I'm excited to dig in and see what else they have going in this. Yeah, for sure. I really enjoyed Wildlands, and I wonder if this game will will follow the trend of being a game that never ends. Yeah, it seems like that game well, almost too long. Yeah, they're, they're, they're those games like. Your hard drive is just not big enough for all these servicey <laughs> games yeah, now. It's yeah. like I'm trading one Ubisoft game to bring another one back. Yep, right. All the time, but uh, I'm excited to play more Breakpoint. Uh, I think we'll probably get a lot more at E3. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, thanks for showing, walking us through this this video. Bert's appreciate it, and Leo, of course. Check out the new episode of the Game Informer Show going up today for more Ghost Recon Breakpoint. All right. Thanks for watching. Gaming can be hard. Watching people play games shouldn't be. New Gameplay Today is your path to getting fun, informational previews of upcoming games and the releases of the day. It's New Gameplay Today, a marginally new way to spend your time.